Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Brother Leroy Pearson of Greater St. Paul AME Church, where our pastor is Dr. Reverend Toby H. Polar. And I greet you all this morning in the joy of just knowing Jesus. In the joy of this knowing Jesus. I thank God for this opportunity this morning as I come once again to sit before you all to bring forth our church school lesson. Lesson number nine, January the 30th, 2022. The month has gone by. The month has gone by. Not realizing how quick time is moving. Seems like the first of the year just came in. Here's the last of the month. So we praise God and we thank God for all that he has done and he's getting ready to do in this season. As I come this morning and we're looking at today's lesson and it's justice and the marginalized. Justice and marginalized. And we understand that we were talking about justice the whole lesson and what God is requiring of us for is justice. What justice look like. What we should do for justice. And justice, the quality of being right. Being just, righteous. Being just and right. Doing what is right. Doing what God has put in your heart to do what is right. Don't just go off good feeling. In it. What God has in store in your heart is what he requires of you. And marginalize a place, place in a position of little or no importance, influence or power. When you think about that and you look at that word and you understand place in a position of little or no power, no importance, influence or power, we have to realize we have all the power. No matter what our position is in this world, we still have power to do something, to make a difference somewhere. People might realize and say things about you they make you feel like you're not important. But God let you know you are very important to him. He has placed you in this world for a reason. And that reason is to bring glory to his name. So that's what we have to do. We have to do what thus says the Lord. We have to let our voice be heard. No man is too small. Nobody is a nobody. Everybody is somebody in God's eyesight. And we have to realize that. And I'm to understand that. Lesson scripture, Deuteronomy 24, 10 through 21. And the focus scripture is the same, Deuteronomy 24, 10 through 21. And our key verse this morning is, Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this. And what God is reminding the children of Israel, Remember how you was oppressed in Egypt? How Pharaoh did you all? How he treated you all? Don't treat people the way Pharaoh treated y'all. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. If you want to be treated with respect and dignity, you have to give the same thing. Give respect and dignity. So always remember, God placed you in a position for a reason. And he's reminding the Israelite, look here. I brought you out of that place, that hardship. Y'all was crying out to me and I heard y'all crying. I came to see about you all. Now y'all are out, so I need y'all to continue to do the good the good work that I have installed in y'all. Don't treat people any kind of way. Don't do people any kind of way. But I'm, I'm marginalized. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm, you're somebody because you are a child of God. That makes you somebody. That makes you important. That makes you want to do what does says the Lord. No matter what man says. Always realize God is the head. God is the leader. God. God is the one that judge, not man. So always want to do what does says the Lord. Let us look to the hill this morning from where all our help come from on this Sunday morning. Thanking him for another day. Jenny. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We glorify and we magnify your holy name on this Sunday morning, on this spirit-filled Sunday morning. Thanking you. For your presence, thanking you for your love, thanking you, Father God, for a brand new day of grace and mercy. Thank you, Father God, for just being God Almighty, how you woke up this morning. Start us on a brand new day, Father God. If it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Lord God, as we continue to press on through this day journey, Father God, direct us, Father God, in a way that you would have us to go. Oh, yes, Lord, teach us your will and your will, Lord God. Father God, open our hearts and minds, Father God, that we receive your word on today, Father God, and not only receive but go out and be doers of your word. 
Treating everybody, Father God, the same. Treating everybody with love and respect. Treating them, Father God, with dignity. Father, we thank you this morning for what you have done and you're getting ready to do. Continue to bless our pastor, our members, Father God, and minister your team, Father God. Continue to bless this world, Father God. Oh, touch it in a mighty way, Lord God, that they may see you, Father God, and glorify you in heaven through all of us, Father God. Lord, I love you and I need you. In your son Jesus' name, I pray this prayer to him today. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 24, 10 through 21, NRSV. And when we look at it and understand that Deuteronomy dealing with the laws, they're dealing with the laws. They're dealing with what God requires of us and the laws he gave Moses to give to his people. I need y'all to buy by these laws. But understand that Jesus came because there were some that studied the laws and knew the laws well. But a lot of them didn't study the law, didn't know the law as well, so they were being oppressed. So that's why God sent his son to take on our sin. So when we look at this lesson this morning in Deuteronomy, starting at the 10th verse, when you make your neighbor a loan of any kind, you should not go into the house to take the pledge. Don't defile that man's house is what God is telling you. Do not go into his house. Stay on the outside and take care of business. You shall wait outside while the person to whom you are making the loan bring the pledge out to you. Bring it to you out the door. Handling the business outside. Because when you understand, your house is sacred. Your house is the house of God. It's your, that's a temple to you. If the person is poor, you shall not sleep in the garment given you at the pledge. If the man, is, that's all he got, do not sleep in his garment. Because that's all he had. You shall give the pledge back by sunset. By the end of the day, you should present it back to him. So that your neighbor may sleep in the clock and bless you. And it will be to you, your credit, before the Lord your God. Give it back. That's why we understand that a lot of people, when they come and ask us for things, they're not able to pay us back. But what God commands us to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you see your neighbors in trouble, you see your neighbors hurting, help them. Don't worry about them paying you back because God blesses you for being that good Samaritan. That's why he said, no matter what your position is in this world, you're still important. You still can help somebody. A lot of times we look at what we have and what we're going through. I can't help nobody. Yes, you can. God has installed it in you. He gives you something to help somebody along the way. You should not withhold the wages of poor and needy labor, whether they're Israelite or alien who reside in your land, in one of your towns. Do what is right. Do not take away from people. You shall pay them their wages daily before sunset because they, poor, they are poor and their livelihood depends on them. Otherwise, they might cry to the Lord against you, and you cur guiltiness. You cur guiltiness because you're oppressing them. You're doing them wrong. Lord hears the cry of the righteous. He hears the cry of the poor. He hears our cry. So when we're doing things that we're not supposed to do to people, God hears us. Hears the cry of the oppressed. Parents shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall their children be put to death for their parents. Only for their own crime may person be put to death. You, you can't kill them. That's why we can raise our children. We teach them the right way and the way to go. And when they go out there and they do things that are unconstitutional, unlawful, and they end up in trouble, or they end up in jail, you can't hold a parent because once we raise them and teach them the right way, when they go out into this world, you continue to pray for them. But they have to make the decision of what they which way that we will go. Whether they're going to serve this world or they're going to serve God. Amen. You should not deprive a resident alien or any offer of justice. You should not take a widow garment in pledge. You should not take a widow garment. You should help the widow. You should go out and do whatever you can to help them. That's why my motto is anytime I see a person that I can help, I'm going to do my best to help them. Because I know God is watching me and he's blessing me. All my blessings come from God. They don't come from man. 
So I praise God and I thank God for all that he has done and he continues to do. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there before I command you to do this. And he said to the Israelites, remember what I did for you all in Egypt? I brought you all out of Egypt? Remember, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheep in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It should be left for the aliens, the orphans, and the widows, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertaking. When you plant your fields and you don't win a harvest, what's left in the field, you leave it there for the poor in the office to come along and to get it, to gleam it, what they call them. Now, we got some people that are greedy. They come in and get it and want to go out and sell it instead of coming to get what they need to take care of them in their home and their family. So we have to be mindful of the things that we do and how we act because God is always watching us. When you, when you beat your olive tree, do not strip what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, do not gleam what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. God is telling us to look out for these people because they are less fortunate. They feel they are nobody. But God said, I have to, I have to give them. I have to supply for them also. I have to make sure they are taken care of. So this is what I command of you to do. So do not take everything. Leave something for them, the orphan, the widow, and the alien, they come along to get to eat, to have. Introduction. God wanted to establish a very different Israelite society. He wanted to establish, look here. I need y'all to focus on me. I need y'all to really and truly elevate your minds. Elevate your mind. Get out of that depression mode that y'all was in when y'all were with Pharaoh and elevate yourself to where I'm taking y'all and doing what I have commanded y'all to do. All laws, whether civil, criminal, or family present, ideal community govern. Everyone should receive fair treatment. This treatment extends from household to strangers. Moses give God instruction to judge, lenders, employees, and farmers. So this is what God is requiring of us. Do what is right. Do what is just. Stand up for what is right. Don't just go along to get along. The old saying. No, do what is right. Allow God to continue to manifest himself in your life. A lot of times we feel that, man, if I do the right thing, I'm going to mess this man up. Do the right thing. And you pray and you ask God to have mercy on him. To help him through whatever he's going through. You're not to judge, but God is. You just continue to do what God has installed in you to do. Telling the Bible story. Whenever a person needs to borrow money, certain rules apply. apply. If the provider is a repayment pledge, the borrower, not the lender, should choose the type of deposit. A pledge according to Jews' rule was not required. Lenders in a borrowing home, God strictly forbid. Do not enter into a borrower's home. Because the first thing you look at, let me look around and see what he has in there. To see whether he can afford this loan that I'm going to give him. No. No, that ain't what God wants. If they come to you, they come to you legit. This ban probably protect the borrower from a lender power abuse. By being out of the item bar offering, what should be spared? Jewish law require the lender to return a borrowed crock at sunset. These crocks serve as sleeping covering, proceeded for lending and borrowing, ensure responsibility by both parties. Lenders should not take advantage of borrowers and borrowers assume, assuredly repayment responsibility. If you borrow something, if you get something from somebody, repay it if you can. If not, you go to and you talk to them. Look here, I don't have what I borrowed from you, and I don't have to pay back like I said. Talk to them. Be a man or a woman about a situation and let them know. Deuteronomy 24, 14 through 15. Work needs their wages daily. After a hard day's work, labor expect payment. 
God direct, direct employees to pay wages on the same day the person earned the money. Failing to pay workers before sunset could result in financial hardship for the labor. Because you never know what a person is going through. You never know what their situation is. They may be to buy food for their family. They may be, light bill may be due. Different things may do, be done, be due at that time. Excuse me. So we have to make sure we do what does say the law. And if the worker appeared to God, the employee in a hidden sin was exposed. Lack of compassion and care for the working poor laid bare a sin, sinful heart. God opens up. He shows us things. He shows us and directs us. So it's up to us to really and truly pay attention to what God is saying and showing us in this world. Many ancient nations sent his father, family, including their children, to death for the father's crime act. Because when, what, what they're thinking is, our apple don't fall too far from the tree. A branch break off, it ain't going to fall too far from the tree. If the father is corrupt, then the children is corrupt. So we're going to go ahead and take out each and every one of this old corrupt people out of this world. So we won't have to worry about them anymore. Wrong mindset, wrong thinking, wrong understanding. Whoever do the crime should do the time. Whoever commit the crime should do the time. So it didn't fall back on the people's family. We shouldn't labor or mesmerize people by saying, well, they ain't going to be nothing because their parents ain't nothing. No, you don't do that. We are all important. We are all God's children. Harmony, harmony, harmony. Laws and ancient code punished children for their father's crime, even if it was accidental. This, as I said earlier, they're punishing children. They're punishing the children because they feel the children is a, is a society, a uh, message to society. They don't feel that they're going to benefit in this society. So let's go ahead and take them out. Let's get rid of them. Hamadi, 18th century or BC, or early king of Babylon. And this is what they installed. This is what they, did they seek God to make this rule? Probably not. Did they came up with it and said, this is what we're going to do. Under Jews' law, children should not be held responsible for parents indecisive. Usually, person held accountable was the only one who committed the sin. Ezekiel 18 and 4. We have seen in earlier lesson about Cain, Saul, and David that God held each of them accountable, uh, held them accountable for their action. Cain killed his brother Abel. Saul wanted to kill David. David slept with Bathsheba and had Uriah killed in war because he wanted Bathsheba. And in the midst of all of this, God still took care of them. God still loved them. God still provided for them. So we have to understand we can get mad about a thing a person do. But what we have to do is seek God and pray and say, Lord, you move in this situation. You have your way in this situation. Deuteronomy 24, 17 through 18, because of this in slavery in Egypt, Israel experienced cruelty, oppression, and unjust laws. Based upon different in nationality, Egyptian Treated the Jews badly. Exodus 1, 8-14. Egypt's bondage served as a reminder that no one, not even foreigners, should experience hardship, harsh treatment, or be made to live as social outcasts. Israel included social gate, social, gave equal treatment to all. Poor, strangers, widow, orphan, living in its border. So God is looking at everybody the same. He's a treat everybody the same. Then no matter what, there's no big you and little I. We are all the same. We are all God's children. We are all striving to make heaven our home. We are striving each day to do what is right, to bring glory to God's name, not to ours. Deuteronomy 24, 19 through 21. 
God Illustrated Israel Hunger Prevents Program. When farmers gleaned, they were to leave some crops in the field, on the tree, grapes on the vine, and, and God gave the exact products to stranger, orphan, and widow, giving away exceeded crop in result in farm receiving God's blessing. In order for us to receive God's blessing, we have to do what is right. We have to always do what is right. This law provides helpful to Jesus, to Jesus and his disciples. One day while walking through a field, they ate grains of wheat, Matthew 12 and 1, Mark 2 and 23. Note the Pharisees did not condemn them for eating the grain, but rather accused them of violating the Sabbath law. If you hungry on the Sabbath, God said eat. He didn't say star. He said eat. So we have to continue to do what does says the Lord. And understanding growing up, we grew up, some grew up as share, sharecroppers, that we shared what with, what with other people. We shared our land, that they would come in and produce fruits and stuff. And it got so bad that where people were taking people land because they got them so far in debt because of them going out borrowing seeds, fertilizer, and stuff to produce the land, and they end up being taken from them. That was not right. And when we look at now what's going on, our case study, black-owned banks have long supported African-American prior to white banks opening their doors to people of color. Black banks provided savings and checking account, loan and mortgage. So remember now, black banks was big one time because we wasn't allowed to go into white banks. And we look at the world today, we still have that divided because some people can go in with, they tell me it's based on your credit, based on your patience. Some people don't have so many repossessions, some more than bankruptcy and everything else, but they still get what they want. But we thank God for we have a job that sits high and look low, and he's a just God. When man say no, God say yes. He makes ways out of nowhere. He opens up doors and avenues for us. All we have to do is continue to pray and say, Lord, you know what I need. I don't want it, but I need it to survive in this world. You didn't lend it to me while I'm here. And when I'm gone, Lord, it's going to the next person. So I thank you for always supplying my need, not my wants. Over time, the number of black bank owned banks Decreed. The currency, there are only 21 that control less than 1% of the United States bank and accessory property, approximately $4.8 billion. With the ongoing discrimination and predator bank practice, such as redefine, reading line, high interest rates, charges, and loan denial practice by many major banks, black banks are especially for black wealthy creation. In 2018, the African Methodist Episcopal Church initiated a formal partnership with black, with black banks with the goal of increasing black wealth, black business development, and home owners. Today's lesson support that this effort that will ensure all have equal access. So we thank God for our AME because our bishop is always looking out for his people, looking out for us, trying to make life better for us. And yes, he has partnered with a black bank here in Columbia, South Carolina. So we praise God and we thank God for all that he has done and he continues to do. So we as African Americans have to go out and do what does says the Lord. We have to continue to help our brothers Help our brothers. Treat them right. Life after Christ. Christians have a responsibility to create a just society. Israel provides an ideal, re replenished government more. Wages, banks, food distributors, policies, and procedures should reflect God's law. In just society, everyone based needs are fulfilled. History lessons from time of enslavement and colonize remind us of injustice and teaches us to treat others with love. If you see your brother or your sisters in trouble or they're hurting, do your best to help them. 
Do your best to be, uh, give them a hand up, not a foot down. You see them trying to get up, you're taking your foot and you're pushing them back down. Give them a hand up. Summarize. God provided instruction to Israel on how to establish a compassion, just society before they entered the promised land. So God gave us instruction. He gave us daily instruction how to go out and do what does says him in this land. It is our job to carry out what he has put forth before us. So we have to always remember, pray and seek God's faith and ask God, how would you have us, what would you have us to do <clears throat> and how would you have us to act? So I praise God and I thank God for you all this morning. I thank you all for allowing me to come into your home. And now as we close with this prayer on today, Lord, please teach me how to treat others the way I want them to treat me. Please remember me of the enslavement and conrise of my ancestors. Let these memories remind me of act justice. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you all, I praise you all, and I glorify God for each and every one of you all. I pray that this lesson was a blessing to you in some type of way. Understanding what God has called us to do and what he is looking for us to do. So when you go out this weekend, remember God's word. Help your brother. Do whatever you can to be a blessing to somebody. And God will bless you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Love y'all. Have an awesome week.